Okay, everybody, I think we're live now. Uh, yep, lights on. You should be hearing me. Uh, I haven't done one of these from out here in the garage for a while. I've been doing the several of them around back in my shop. So if somebody would just let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, I don't have any don't have anybody here with me to do a sound check so if somebody okay key says i can hear you thank you key uh welcome everybody uh you know it's the first of the month first saturday of the month thing so we're going to do the the q a thing uh, i'd ask hobby to to join me i sent him a link and i don't know he must be tied up or something so um he may he may pop in later who knows but I did want to uh, ask you all, how many of y'all have started your project for your uh, almost useless challenge that Javi's doing this the month of April? I'll give it a minute to scroll up here. Has anybody, uh, anybody already started that? See, let's see. Let me do a quick, uh, quick roll call here. We got Alan H, Sean Martyr, John Gomez, Leo Steger, Dave Mack, Frankie CNC, Keith Allen, Snapshots, Mark Allen, Rich McNatt, Wizard Woodworks, Shane's Hobby Shop, Tracy Keaton, Edward Miller, Jesse from JJ's Wood Shop, Hendrix Woodworking. Gwinnett Woodworkers. I don't know if that's Rob. I guess that's Rob. I, I, I'm not sure. Thank Jim Senecola, Harnell Media. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Um, Matt Peel in the house. Um, Jay Kitchens. I think that's Jeremy Kitchens, if I'm not mistaken. The Wood Bucket. Uh, Raymond Dixon. I might have said him already. That would work. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Rob. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Rick Nolan, Dale Ludlum, Burnett's Custom Woodworking. How you doing, Alan? David Bud. Man, I tell you what, we got a bunch of folks. It's amazing what happens when you give away something. <laughs> Y'all come out of the woodwork. Uh, yeah, we got ninety viewers watching. Normally, I don't don't even have that many unless it's near the end of the show but welcome everybody uh you know we're going to do the q a we're going to sometime during the show tonight we'll do uh the giveaway i got my phone blowing up here let's see what all that's about okay uh anyway corey orell in the house how you doing corey george rothfuss I know what mom knows. How are you, Shelly? Glad y'all could, could watch tonight. Uh, just before we get started taking questions, um, I got a, just a couple of things I want to talk about, I guess. One, I, I was going to mention again, Javi's Challenge. She's doing a, uh, for the whole month of April, and today's the 7th, so you still got about a little over three weeks to go. He's doing the almost useless challenge. Uh, he's got a video and I forgot to put the link in the description again. Uh, I'll put it in there after the show. Uh, but y'all know how to find Javi. It's Javi's Woodshop on YouTube uh, and Javi and Sweta on uh, Facebook. So just get with them, check out his video uh, and learn about the uh, almost useless challenge i had i have been thinking about doing something i got a project in mind for that that i've had for i don't know probably six months and now i'm hoping i still have time to do it but i don't know if i'm going to or not i got jury summons the other day so got to go for that and no telling how much time that'll tie up so not too excited about that but uh, richard smedley how you doing, Richard? Larry Duggar, Tony Eck, Joseph Poindexter, Rob Hampton. See a lot of uh, names I don't normally see over there. So I'm glad y'all could, uh, could tune in and watch it. Okay, so we've talked about the, the 
useless challenge or the almost useless challenge. I want to talk about something else that I think is really cool. And I think you guys are really going to like this. I got something in the mail yesterday. Um, and I'm not much on reading books, but this one I sat down and read it pretty much cover to cover last night. Um, and this is just a really awesome book that's going to help a lot of CNC newbies or people that are brand new to CNC. But this is a book called, let's see if I can hold this up here, CNC Router Essentials. And it is written by Randy Johnson and my good friend, George Fondresco. You know, we had George earlier on the show. In fact, he kind of started out the this, but when we went back to Saturdays, he was the first guest I had. But this book, let me just, uh, you know, of course, I'm not going to sit here and read the whole book to you. But let me just kind of tell you what the what the, the chapters are. It's got a chapter on CNC basics, uh, design essentials, tool path essentials, machine setup, project materials. It even has uh, some practice projects where you do basic drawing and tool path techniques. Uh, also, another practice project where you do 3D carving and raised lettering. Uh, and another one where you do bitmap tracing and texture carving. And the fourth project is two-sided machining and 3D texturing. And then there's also a, uh, a gallery in here as well. But this book, I am telling you, I was so impressed when, when I started reading this thing. And it, there's not, you know, because there's so many different kinds of machines, so many different kinds of controllers, there's not any one specific, you know, like there's, I don't think there's anything in here about Mach 3 or UCCNC or anything like that, but it all is kind of based around the Vectric products. So you'll see these screenshots uh, and, you know, I know most of us, you know, use the vector products, whether it be VCAR desktop, VCAR Pro, Aspire, whatever. So a lot of this stuff uh, is going to look real familiar. But man, you talk about a information-packed book. It is, uh, like I said, I couldn't put the thing down. I, I got it last night and I sat out of my recliner and just started kind of thumbing through it. And the next thing I know, it was time to go to bed because I'd sit there and gone through all this. So, but just, I just think this is a super book. Uh, like I said, for, and not just for the new folks, but you know, there's going to be stuff in here that not everybody knows anyway. So make sure you check that out. I've got a link below that George sent me uh, down in the show description. There's also links on my website, uh, but do yourself a favor and check this out. I think it's uh I can't remember the exact price. I think it was under $25 at, at Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. So just a, just a, just a really nice book for, uh, for all the, the people just getting started, especially that'll really help you out. Okay. Let's see. We've got, uh, let's, Rich McNatt. I don't know if I, yeah, Rich, it's, there's a link right down in the under this video here. If you click that show more thing, if you don't already have that opened up, there's a link that George sent me that'll take you straight to the Amazon page um, for that. And then there's also, I've got links on both my websites, the davegatton.com and the um, garageworkscnc.com. So... Hi, Herb. Herb Lichtenberg in the house. Justin Tanner. Alicia Chipser. <laughs> Steve Bush. Uh, all right. We've got a bunch of folks. Yeah, up, up to like 127 folks. What? Oh, we've got Javi joined. When did you sneak in, Javi? I didn't even. <laughs> well, five minutes ago. I, I'm sorry I'm late, Dave. I was uh, I was uh, dinner with the family, you know, the usual. Did you bring a, an excused absence slip? Or? Uh, let me go get one. <laughs> well since you're here now i i did kind of touch on the useless child i mean you may have heard me i don't know how long you've been sitting there 
I was but, watching. Uh, go uh, ahead and uh, the book. <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and uh, go over the useless challenge thing. I, again, I screwed up and forgot to put the links down there, but I'll I'll do that after the show, like I did last week. I'll, uh, I'll throw one into the about that challenge, Javi. I'll throw one into the chat. Uh, the uh, the second annual useless challenge, almost useless challenge. Uh, for those of you who uh, are not aware, um, uh, it's a challenge. April, uh, throughout the month of April, create something out of wood um, or wood byproducts or a portion of wood thereof. Uh, make it completely, completely, completely useless. Make it creative. And make it funny. It's that simple. And uh, submit your video to me, and I'll put up the link uh, for the uh, for the detailed, funny, humorous instructions. Well, I think they're funny. My daughters think I'm ridiculous, so the usual. <laughs> okay. Well, glad you made it in, Javi. I, I I sent you the link, and I thought, well. You know, maybe you'll just pop in when you can. So I'm glad you uh, glad you snuck in there. Yeah, I, I scanned back all the messages. Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, did, you didn't miss anything. Okay. Well, I've got the. Uh, you know, because we're doing a a giveaway on a Gatton CNC kit, I thought that I would do the show from out here so that the folks could see exactly what a Gatton CNC kit is. Yep. Uh, and I've got and I've got the kit that I'm going to send off to whoever our lucky winner is tonight. Right here, I'll be going through that. Uh, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But since I'm out here in the garage, I've got that uh, TV. It's not a real big one, but I've got the chat blown up with this laptop, and then have it going over there to the TV so that I can uh, actually read it without my glasses if I squint just a little bit. So there you go. Uh, We've got Jim Horton in the house, uh, Dwight, somebody, I'm not sure, Chris Nealon with Niantic River Woodcrafting. I saw Carl Whitaker in there a while ago. There he is. Shelly, Leo, Jeff Wilder, yeah, Shane, yeah. Alicia, Wizard. He's out there, Steve Nealon. Yep. Just a bunch of folks. There's Paul from, uh, P I think it's Paul from PNG Custom Woodworks. Yep. Bubba Hogue's in the house. Mark Peck. How about Dave Stewart? Man, just a bunch of folks. The, the numbers keep climbing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I keep looking at the number to see how many viewers, only because I know how many people entered. And I'm thinking, theoretically, if somebody's going to take the time to fill out an entry, you'd think they'd take the time to watch. You know, well, 134 are here. Yeah, you can't win if you're not watching. So, and just so you know, folks, we had exactly 150 entries. So, um, we'll be doing that here uh, sometime during the show. David Battershell in the house, Patrick's Woodshop. What's up, Patrick? Secret City Woodworks. Uh, okay. Secret City Woodwork says, I missed where you enter. Man, I don't know how you can miss it. I, <laughs> I, I do everything I can to make it where it's as easy as possible. No worries. You can enter every week. Yeah. I mean, my my, I'm easy to find. I mean, I, it's not like I could hide now if I wanted to. Uh, okay. Well, Let's go ahead and see if, if anybody out there has got any questions and we'll take a few questions and then uh, in a little bit, I'll, I do want to, I do want to ask, I guess I'll go ahead and ask, Hey George, how you doing? George Von is out in the chat. Uh, George, if you just got here, I was talking about what a fantastic book this is, not just for the, Yep. brand new person but i'm sure there's some stuff even i haven't tried yet i mean you cut i mean i can't believe you got i wonder how long it took you to gather up all this information because it's i mean you got every you got all the bases covered here just a just a fantastic book so glad uh glad you made it george and like i said folks if you want to check out that book i put the uh the link 
right down in the show description. Click on that. It'll take you right to it. Uh, it's worth worth every penny. It's kind of, it reminds me kind of like of the Vectric software. You know, it's like, you know, we say, you know, it's kind of expensive, but once you buy it, it's like, man, they ought to be selling this for twice as much. That's the way I feel about this book because the number of the, just the things he's got packed in there. And I like, I like, it says basics for mastering the most innovative tool in your workshop. And that's, that's really what a CNC is. Yeah. Just another tool in the workshop. Okay. Am I missing any questions now that I'm, does the muscle chuck reduce your Z axis height? I think only slightly. Very, very slightly. Uh, may, actually, maybe not any because it's basically replacing the nut, the, the nut. So it's probably about. If it does, it, it can't be more than. It's half an inch. It's about half an inch. Yeah. You're welcome, George. Like I said, that's. Uh, I I was, I was extremely pleased when I opened that up. <laughs> Because it, it is just, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just full of awesome stuff. All the, and, and I like the way it's all about the Vectric stuff because so many people use that stuff. Uh, the Vec, uh, desktop, Big Car Pro, Aspire, whatever. And the screenshots and all the arrows and things you've got going on in that book. Make it where even somebody like me can understand it. So. Super awesome job with that, uh, George and uh, and Randy. So, all right, we've answered a question about the um, muscle check. Dana Sawmiller says, Dave, thanks for all you do to help us. You're welcome, Dana. It's uh. Okay, I'm still looking. I don't see any questions over there. I guess but maybe they're doing that on purpose, not going to ask any questions, so we'll hurry up and get to the... Well, that just makes it longer. I mean, because <laughs> we're, we're waiting for questions. When we yeah. answer... when I'll tell you what. When Dave answers 15 viable questions, then we'll get on with the uh, giveaway. How's that? 15, yeah. no fewer than 15 questions. Ask away. Alan Kreifel's in the house. How are you doing, Alan? From uh, Kansas, I believe, is where Alan is. Yep. I, w <laughs> I wish y'all could see my door. I left the door cracked going into the house here. Well, I say cracked. It's big enough for my dog to stick his head in. <laughs> he keeps sticking his head in out that door looking at me. Which Aspire program is best for designing cutting guitar necks, designing and cutting guitar necks and bodies, 2D or 3D? Which Aspire program? Yeah, I guess I they guess mean, mean whether, whether, what, which Vectric program, which, uh, yeah, whether Aspire or... Uh, well, since to do a guitar neck is, is going to be a 3D, a 3D project, I'm assuming you would have to have Aspire unless you... Uh, import the uh, three. Yeah, games. unless you did drew it in something else and saved it as an STL and and then brought that into VCar Pro and did it as two sided machining or something, I, you could probably do it. I'll be sending the link to Dave's uh, channel to enter in the drawing as uh, soon as I can figure out where it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me you're having trouble finding. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've, I've got one. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've got a Gatton CNC and a rather large one at that. So, uh, let's see here. Okay, let's see. Who makes the laser you put on your CNC? I don't know who that question is for, but if you're talking to me, Alan, it's uh, I have the JTEC Photonic uh, 2.8 watt laser. Uh, in fact, I've had it for, I don't know, I've had that thing probably a couple of years now. Um, 
I'm going to be putting it on my 4x4 garage works out there in the shop. I had it in here on a, on a little 2 but uh, uh, one of the 24 by 18. Uh, I had a demo machine. I finally ended up just taking it apart because I had, I had like three machines out here. And uh, so now I'm down to two out here, and I've got one, one around back in the shop. So there's the link for the uh, Gatton CNC giveaway. You can just go to davegatton.com at any time every week and click on the Gatton CNC giveaway link. Enter all the information, and you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Your dog thinks you're talking to yourself, Dave. Yeah, he probably, I have two dogs, and they probably both think I'm nuts, but that's okay. Uh, Leo is asking, uh, I think I'll take that one. Leo's asking what program will be able to take a scanned object and cut the cut on the outside lines. Oh, okay. Take a scanned object and cut on the outside lines only. Okay. That's a simple. In fact, Leo, if you like in two weeks time, cause I've already got something for next. I'll, uh, I'll put it on my show. How to, uh, how to cut out a silhouette from any, any object, but, uh, any, uh, any picture program, any kind of uh, graphic program like, uh, illustrator, and what you should do is everything on the inside, fill it in uh, in black and make the rest white and import that picture into a spire and do a, a trace. That's the easy way. And it will just create one simple outline. Uh, the other way is just, just bring whatever picture you want into a spire and do an auto trace but remember you'll have to get rid of all the inside garbage and just keep the outside and you might if it's not perfectly uh closed in you might have to do a little tweaking and you have a few more you have a question from carl whitaker on grounding uh concerning grounding a gatton kit being wood is conductivity an issue uh, well <laughs> it, yeah because you got to find the ground. Yeah. Uh, I saw uh, I saw a question. There, there's a bunch of questions now scrolling by so fast. I want to get to that one Jerry asked, Jerry Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, he was asking about uh, my CNC with the spindle, which I'm assuming he's talking about this one, because that's the only one I got a spindle on. And he was asking about the touch plate. Jack, you got to go, boy. Uh, my touch plate is nothing more than a, and I've showed this before, I think, nothing more than a piece of angle with an alligator clip. You know, then this black wire here is going to the ground or, or a terminal block with, the, with ground. Um, and then, of course, this is going to, I forget which pin it is. I don't remember off the top of my head, but whichever one I, I chose to use for for the for the pro. And when I'm using this, when I'm using it on this, I do have to connect. And I'll see if I can pull this up. And Jerry, I think you've got this same. You know that bolt that's in the middle that's just used to to tighten up to make the thing spread apart. That's what I hooked the alligator clip to. I really could hook it to anything, but since that's really the only thing kind of sticking out, that's what I connect it to. Yep. Now, as I mentioned before, from when I was doing it from out in the uh, out in my shop on my garage works out there, I'm running a Porter cable 690, and that thing is grounded internally, so. As long as that router is plugged in, I can use the touch plate and I don't have to, I don't have to use the alligator clip. I have it on there. I, I made it with one because I didn't know for sure what, what I was going to be using for a spindle or router. So I just put both wires in there. But when I, as long as I'm, I just have to make sure that I haven't unplugged it because I don't want to send the thing coming down and realize, you know, 
if I don't have it plugged in, it's going to keep going. It's not going to stop when it hits that plate. So, okay. Uh, We've got a few good questions here. Uh, well, Carl, in answer to your other grounding a probe question, uh, the wood is not an issue because uh, what you simply do is you run the wire along with the uh, rest, with the rest of the wires through the track and and connect them to the uh, to any part of the metal. Uh, any part that is metal. You have a question here from the Redders, Dave. Uh, uh, he doesn't know much about CNC, and he's asking about the difference between your machine and any other on the market. That's a vague one. <laughs> the difference between mine and any other on the market? Yes. Why is your machine different? Well, my... Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's quite it's, a question. Well, here's the thing. You know, I can't I can't speak for any other machines. The only other type of I mean, I've had a bunch of different routers, CNC routers, but they've always been mine. They've always been the ones I built. So I did have an X car at one time, not that I bought the thing. Don't I didn't buy it. I took one in on trade uh for somebody that wanted a garage works. Uh, probably one of the biggest mistakes I've ever done. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, I got rid of it, and, and somebody else is making good use of it now. But, uh, but yeah, the biggest difference, I guess, between mine and, and the garage, whether it's the Garage Works or the Gatton, is mine or a build it yourself. Now, I know the, the X Carve and stuff like that is you also have to put some of the other ones together, probably a shape Oco, stuff like that. But a lot of the other machines uh, come pretty much assembled. There's not a whole lot of stuff you have to do. Um, mine, you know, for example, the garage works, it comes completely assembled or disassembled. Uh, it's right out of the camera shot here, but I've got a rack here with all kinds of safety orange parts sitting here. Got some more back over there. Um, you know, you, you get that, you watch the videos, you put it together. Mine's a very simple design, probably uh, a lot simpler than than some of the other ones. Uh, I, you know, not that the, the other ones are bad. It's just that I like to keep things simple. Um, same thing with the, uh, with the Gat and CNC. It's a... Uh, a kit. Uh, when you buy a, a GAT, I might as well go ahead and talk about this now since that question come up. The GAT CNC <laughs> kit is will come like this. You'll get a box. You get free mouse pad while they're while I got them, and then you get a box of parts that are. Here's one of the uprights. You know, you get 21 parts. So all of these parts, let me move this back out of the way now. The 21 parts are, if I, let's see if I can stay in the shot here. Yeah. You get the two uprights. You get the Acme nut block that mounts to the side of the upright. You get the all the parts to make up the Z-axis box. Um, the Z-axis plate, the front plate, the, the rear plate, uh, these cross member pieces that go in the middle. You get pretty much everything. The only thing that doesn't come in that kit, as you saw, that box wasn't that big. You don't get the cross member pieces. But if you look, they're just a straight cut. There's no fancy profile to it. It's just a straight cut. You could do it with a table saw. You could do it with you know, a circular saw and a guide. Uh, and the cool thing about this kit, because I don't ship those long pieces, you now can make your your build wider than what the plans call for. You can make it narrower than what the plans call for. You can build your table, whatever size you want to build it, as far as front to back, you can make it deeper than what I, the plans call for. The, the kit does come with a set of plans. I think if I remember right, there's like 
43 pages here. So very detailed plans on how to put it together. And of course, I've got build videos on my YouTube channel and on the website as well that pretty much go over, over every little detail to put it together. Um, the, uh, the plans are also available in three different ways. You can get them in metric, you can get them in decimal, or you can get them in fraction, whichever, what you're, what you're wanting to work with. Um, but that's probably the biggest difference now. You know, as far as getting back to your original question, the big difference between mine and all the other machines, I, there's there's no way I can really talk about the other machines because I don't have them. a lot of good a lot of good machines out there. Yep. Uh, so, let's yeah. see. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few, uh, quite a few of questions stacking up here. Uh, okay. Let's see your. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, John Games is he too late to register? Uh, you can register once a week. It's too late for this week, but uh, not for next. Um, well, now, Addy... let, let me back that. Let me back that up just a second now. Sure. Because last week I said I may give one away every week, or I mean I probably will. I may give two a week. I may give three a week, but I'm not even sure I'm going to have a show next week. So right. But I mean, you could still enter, but it may be for whatever the we should say the whatever the next drawing is, as opposed to next week. Yep. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Wood Chips is asking: When adding a track to a Gatton CNC, should I level the base MDF, then add the T track, and then fill in between? Um, well, I mean, we different people have different ways of doing it, uh, and you'll get a lot of di different opinions on their opinions are wide and varied. Uh, Dave actually uh, 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 surfaced his spoil board, then cut the grooves, and uh, or actually, I believe you you butted them up against each other, didn't you? The uh, when you made your spoil board for the uh, for the most recent yeah. for the, uh, on the, on the garage works out the garage there. Works? Yeah, and see, it this never fails. Every time I, I do a show from one spot, somebody always asks a question where I could show them if yeah. I was in the other spot. But what I did is when I built the frame, you know, it's just a steel frame, and I took some uh, three quarter inch uh, cabinet grade plywood and cut to make my table. I used those little, uh, excuse me a minute here. If I, can. I just made these simple little cams. That I use to lock my my piece we're, of we're plywood. Over, we're over here, Dave. <laughs> to oh. your right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, just make sure you're on screen. So, I guess this, this isn't really a good one, but the, you know, I make these little cam things. Mm -hmm. So you drill a hole through your plywood. You and I've got a T nut on here, quarter twenty T nut, and you put holes near your frame and where that channel is. If my hand is where the form channel is, when you tighten these up. This will swing and hit inside the channel. And then as you tighten it down, it clamps that plywood down to that steel. So you don't have, I mean, you could drill holes in the steel and stuff if you wanted to, but that's a really easy way, I think, to, to pull your table, your, your plywood base down against that steel frame. And then what I did is I bought, I think, uh, I think I got nine pieces of that uh, T-track from Orange Aluminum and uh, got them in four foot lengths. And I just figured out, you know, found the center of my table, put one down, and then I just cut the strips of three-quarter MDF, put that beside it, and then put another T-track and, and just kept, kept going that way out. And so far, it's worked out really well because the uh, – I can't remember exactly what the center to center on my T track is, but so far I've cut a lot of different size things and I've never had any issue, you know, trying to reach something with a clamp. It's worked out really yeah. well. And I, and I have a slightly different technique, but just about the same. And, and a lot of people have different, all types of varied uh, ways on this particular machine. I have the, uh, I have uh, holes drilled 
uh, Marius Hornberger's design with with cam clamps on my other machine on the on the Gatton on the Colossus. Well, I call it Colossus on the big Gatton I have in the in the back. I actually created two levels of spoil board. The first level basically has the T tracks flush, and the second level is only the quarter inch slits. So when I'm tightening and I tighten like a gorilla when i really tighten those clamps down it's pulling the t-track up against the spoil board which is pushing down against the um so, uh the piece so there's there's no no worry that that i'm gonna tear my t-track off uh for instance uh, another question you had dave was uh regarding Man, I tell you what, we may have to postpone this giveaway because I'm seeing a ton of questions I'm over there. Telling you, I'm telling all you. Night. <laughs> uh, there was a question of of uh, MDF versus. Here we go, David Battershell. Spoilboard question. Lots of people use MDF, but if you use ply, wouldn't that cause an issue when you try to resurface? I don't know if he's responding to somebody else's question or asking a question himself, but uh, but plywood is is a pain to resurface. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't see. I have my ply. I have my MDF setting on top of my plywood, David. So I admit they may not even been. He might, that might have been a, their own conversation or something. I don't know. Yeah, so, that's that's what I'm. Yeah, you don't want to try to resurface plywood. Like, no, like right here, this table right here, and I've talked about this all the time. Uh, you probably can't really see it, but I have four inches, a four inch grid of T nuts underneath this this table and i have never you know this is just the piece of plywood and again i've used those same clamps to clamp this down to that steel frame and the only marks i put on here is i've got a where i've taken an end mill and made a line here and then one going up that way to give me a kind of an l shape reference to line things up but I have other than that, I haven't put a scratch on this table because when I'm cutting, uh, when I'm cutting these kits, and this is the machine I use for that, I'm all, I always have this. You can see how that has been used and <laughs> used and abused. Yeah, but this is like some. This isn't even good plywood. This is like some five eighths you know, exterior grade, but I just throw something underneath. And, you know, of course, with the kits, I'm cutting all the way through and I'm putting heavy tabs on them so they don't fly out so that when I get done, now this is, I haven't even carried these around back to burn them up yet, but this is one of the skeletons right here. So when this, when I run these parts, they're all in here with these tabs. You can see some of these, how big these tabs are. I can just pick this whole thing up and set it aside and then throw another one on, hit the button and go do something else. So, and, uh, let's see another couple questions here. Uh, uh, Ryan Ballard was uh, saying he's getting some X axis chatter on the back third of his Y axis, but nowhere else. Any ideas what would cause it? Uh, Ryan, I had something similar happen to me and it was, uh, and it was an issue where, and, and I don't know if, 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 Dave has any other ideas, but it was an issue where the tracks were not perfectly straight. There was uh, one of the pieces, you know, no wood is perfect. One of the plywoods was just a little bit thinner on one side than the other. So um, uh, whatever the case may be, the tracks were off by a little bit. So there was a little bit extra play in the back part of the, actually for me, it was the front part of the tracks. What I did was I tightened down the uh, the V-groove bearings just a bit more than normal and pushed the track back and forth, and it, it all uh, leveled it out. Uh, Dave, any other reason why that might might happen? I mean, uh, no. I mean, if you're getting that only in a certain spot, then obviously there's something not right in that spot. So Right, right. You just have to investigate and see yeah. see what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
D Dana Sa Sawmiller is asking if uh, you do any 3D carving. Do I? Uh, yep. Yeah, I do. Uh, mostly just to demonstrate the machines. I, I well, one that that probably most people have seen, and I, maybe I can turn this camera around here. Javi, tell me when I'm seeing this. Yep. Uh, right, what are you right there? Ah, yes. There was my. If I can bring this back. There was my pallet challenge from last year, and I did that 3D eagle in the center of that. Uh, but I don't do a lot of a lot of uh, 3D carving, just because. To be quite frank, I, I really don't have time to do a whole lot of stuff for myself. Uh, you know, if I'm running machines, I'm I'm running something like that to demo a machine to show somebody the machine's capabilities, or I'm running Gatton CNC kits with this machine out in the garage or in the uh, shop, rather, where I have my garage works out back. I use, you know, I try to cut all my HDPE out there, so I'm cutting the the uh, wedge templates that i sell on my website i cut those out there i cut the spacer blocks out there i cut all of the hdpe parts that go with the garage work cnc i cut those out there and that's most of that's most of the time when i'm running my machine that's what i'm doing i'm cutting something that that i'm selling i'm not yeah. just cutting something pretty that yeah you know i wish i had more time to, to do some of that stuff but yeah yeah don't so, we all um, Keith Allen, uh, this is the last question, unless I miss some and I apologize, go ahead and throw them back up. Uh, I know, I know Bubba had one earlier, but I remember what it is. So we'll, okay. Uh, Keith Allen is asking, does the computer need to have a parallel port or will a USB port work? Okay. Uh, actually a USB port will work better than okay. Yep. Uh, a, a, a parallel port will work. Okay. A USB port works better than okay. Uh, and that is when you're using uh, UC and C controller. Yeah, the UC, one of those, I use the UC 100. I have two of them. I use one on uh, one on this machine right here. And I have the other one out in my shop that I use with my garage works. And I, I love those things. Not, you know, they, they make the, I don't know what the big difference is with the 300 and the 400. I, I'm assuming they have, I think some of them have kind of a built-in breakout board or something. I, I don't know, but um, you have the, uh, the you have, you have, and I love those things. You have the lubrication question again on the ball screws. I mean, on the, on the, on the, on the screws. Uh, do you use any type of lube at all on the, uh, just wondering, um, because he doesn't use any, he just keeps it wiped down. That's exactly what Dave does. Well, but I, I'm not, I don't even do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I should say I do it, but I, I really don't. If you look, if you were to look at this machine right now, and I'm, I'm not going to try to drag the camera around there, but you know, usually when I build a machine and I first fire it up. And I, I've used white lithium grease for years, and a lot of folks don't want to use it, and I don't care. They don't have to if they don't want to. But I, I take my finger, and I've got a jar of it right there, and I put a little on my finger. I stick it on the, the lead screw, and then I run everything around. And basically what it does is it will kind of accumulate around your Acme nut. You know, I've got a blob there and, and on the one on the other side and everywhere. But I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. Now, as far as lubrication, you could look at that leaf screw right there, and you might think it's it's uh, you know it's dried. It needs some lubrication or something. But I guarantee you, if you take your hand and touch that thing, you're gonna have black crap all over your hand from because it's greasy. Yep. So, but it doesn't really take much. I mean, if you're just wiping them off. That's probably all you need to do. As long as the machine's running right and not binding, you're okay. Okay, do we have any other anything else? Uh, well, you have Bubba's question, if you uh, remember it yeah, there. Bubba, I, I, 
I apologize, but I hope you're still out there watching. He uh, he had asked earlier if there was anything he could do to his garage works to put a spindle on it. Ah. <laughs> and here's the thing, Bubba. And I, I've told folks this till I'm blue in the face. The this whole garage works thing was originally designed to run a compact router. Either four cable 450, I got a DeWalt 611, you know, the little one and a quarter compact type routers. Rigid makes something similar, whatever. But you know, you know how people are. They buy something and they're like, well, I'm gonna put this on there. You know, the next thing you know, there's people running 690s and 892s and there, I saw somebody post a video on Facebook. Um, I think uh, Nathan Longfellow, I think is his name. And he had a video of their, him cutting something. And he's got a spindle on his garage works. So it'll probably hold it okay. I just hate to tell people, yeah, you can put that on there. Because then if it falls off or something messes up, you know, they'll go, well, you said it would work. I've always said use a compact router that's what it was designed for but that's not saying it won't hold up so like i said there's other there's a couple other folks out there running spindles and that's just the ones i know of maybe more than that so you uh you just have to get one and try it yep uh alan bader how did you modify the gatton behind you to work with a spindle i can answer that uh that's a simple modification the uh two pieces that hold the uh the uh router are just a different size uh, they're just cut at a smaller size and and voila you can yeah. mount pretty much if if you actually actually the spindle uh that the chinese spindle that i ordered actually comes with uh, a mount and you can screw that mount straight onto the uh, Z plate on on the Gatton, and uh, and either well, way works. Because yours is like mine, isn't it, Javi? Yes. You know you have to yeah. you have to uh, it won't. I mean you have to because it's smooth on the back, or mine was. You have to either drill some holes or tap them or right. something. And I put a I put an aluminum plate. Because I wanted mine where I could still pull it off without having to go inside and get to it. Right. Uh, as far and the uh, when I first got it, before I took the time to put that aluminum plate and tap that that mount that came with the spindle, I just used this. This is the eighty millimeters, and it really worked fine. I really didn't need. I thought about not even changing it. Yep. But. Uh, I just just made this, and I hit it had you know obviously because that thing's longer. I went ahead and put three of these on here instead of two, and it worked fine. So I just noticed we've got uh, Nathan Longfellow is in the chat. Yep. And I was just talking about him. He said probably going with the one point five instead of the two kilowatt but the yeah the 1.5k is is garage. a little smaller for the uh for the garage works that'll work uh real real well i mean people have mounted them on their garage works i mean uh it's not meant for it but that doesn't mean you can't do it <laughs> yeah and see and, and when i say it wasn't designed for work you know it's because of the materials i use for the rails and things if i don't know people were going to be putting 25 pounds worth of spindle and router on there I'd have just made that stuff out of thicker material, but then, you know, of course it would cost more too. And my thing was trying to get a decent entry level, do it yourself type machine that somebody can afford and, you know, not run the cost up. That's why, you know, there's a lot of things about this machine and people say, well, I don't know, you should have done this or you should have done that. Yeah, I know how to do all that stuff, but, I was trying to keep everything the cost down, you know. Uh, I could have used rack and pinion, or I could have, you know, used the the linear slides and all that stuff. But it would probably cost twice as much as what it does now. Yeah. And I don't know that it would make it twice as much better. Right. Because, you know, 
Hey, Anybody Jake, that's is pretty happy with it as far as Jake I know. Kitchen 71 is asking uh, if anyone, if anything he should be concerned with, if he makes his kit into a 5x10 table so he can cut a full 4x8 four, uh, four sheet. Well, uh, speaking as someone who, who chose the biggest size possible, I'll say this, uh, uh, Jay Kitchens, uh, the the only concern you have, you, you don't have any concerns as far as adaptability. You could make it as large as you like it. Uh, the, the big issue is you're going to be paying an arm and a leg because the lead screws, they only make them six feet long, uh, the half-inch lead screws, which means you have to uh, account for bigger lead screws, which cost a lot more. You have to account for the uh, uh, the backlash nuts for that size because uh, the 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 references at in Dave's page for dumpster CNC they make them for the uh, for the half inch uh, five star uh, and uh, and 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 the mounts I mean the uh, uh, short of that there's no problem and and a couple people have done it. But then it'll all go back to, and I'll direct it back to Dave because he's, he's, I don't know if he's tired of saying this already, but there's really no need to build it bigger than, say, a little bit more than four by four because you can tile a, a sheet in there. And there's very rare occasions that you're going to actually cut a four by eight sheet. And if you're doing that, you might as well buy a, a big milling machine because it's more of a production uh, issue. You know, I, I, Hobby's right. I get tired of it. To, of saying this, but if if you, the people that think about wanting to build a four by eight, man, you got to really stop and think what you're getting yourself into. You're you're building something that's going to take up at least probably five by ten worth of footprint in your shop, maybe maybe six by ten. And how often are you really going to need that full ninety six inches worth of stuff? Probably not very often. Uh, if you just cut stuff once in a while, you'd be much better to buy, uh, build something that will cut four by four, tile it, and, you know, or index or whatever you want to call it. There's, you know, a lot of different ways Vectric uses the tiling method. Uh, and Javi demonstrated tiling just last week, wasn't it, Javi? On your yep. Thing? Yeah, on, so, the, on the show, yep. And I'll, uh, I'll make a couple videos on it uh, soon. Yeah. Uh, wood but, chips. Uh, which is asking, I'm sorry. You know, if, you, if you really are, you know, if you've got a product that you're already selling and and you've got to have something that'll cut that 96 inches or, or, you know, 84 inches or whatever it might be, then you probably ought to look at buying a bigger production type machine. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Jerry Brown was saying his five by five that, that he built is massive and he's never cut anything out of a four, eight by four sheet of plywood. Uh, I mean, mine is huge. The only reason why I built it that large is because, well, for those of you that have seen my video, I put it up against the wall, and uh, mine is adaptable. But when it's down, there's no room to walk barely around it. Uh, uh, Wood Chips is asking if you're going to Houston, Dave. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. I, I can't remember exactly when. Wh what's the date of that thing? Uh, the Houston. I don't, don't know thing. myself. And then, uh, I'm and then, probably not gonna make it. Like I said, I this that jury summons thing just kind of put a monkey wrench in my plans. And of course, I might not get picked, but yeah. you know, you never know. I got picked the last time, and it wasn't the last time wasn't that long ago. That's why I you know, kind of ticked about it because surely there's enough other people in this county that you could get somebody else. Can't believe uh, my name yeah. come up again. It's next, next week, week. Uh, according to Jerry Brown. Okay, next week. Next next week. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah. Unless something drastic changes, I, I probably won't be able to make it, Jerry. I'd love to come, but uh, probably won't I, be able to make it. I don't have any more questions for you at the moment. Uh, if you want to move on to the uh, okay, other, Sam, other fun I, stuff. You need to put a frequently asked questions on your website. Yeah, I suppose I probably should do that because people apparently don't go back and watch videos of the show yeah. because it seems like I answer the same stuff or at least some of the same questions over and over again. 
you know, like what's the difference between Gatton and Garage Works and, you know. Jim Santacola says, you'll get picked. Yeah, I probably will. I got picked last time. Fortunately, the guy, the, the guy, guy that was in trouble last time I got picked for jury duty, he was like, they had so much evidence on this guy. I mean, I don't know why I even bothered trying to fight it to start with, but once they, we, I got, it only lasted one day because I mean, they, they, once the prosecution started coming up with this and this and then they found all this stuff in his house. And I mean, they had him red handed. Mm -hmm. Finally, after that, they found out what all they had. I guess he just said that ah, I better take a, yeah. take a plea. Uh, Sean Martyr is asking about the Xylotex controller, the new, the newer version, uh, for those starting a new build, uh, do you like it? Yeah, Sean, I saw that. Uh, I don't even know where I put that thing now. It's out here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's up under this. Uh, it's up under that cart. I I bought that thing, and my intentions were to swap it out with what I have on the uh, Garage Works out there in my shop which is you know the you know one of the older boxes before he quit making the 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 little white enclosure boxes and i just haven't had time to swap it out because every time i think i'm going to get a chance to do it you know i got something i got to cut out there so i just haven't done it yet but i will keep y'all posted uh you know i'll be doing a show again from out there when i have it have it up there and uh we'll uh We'll talk about it then. I have, you know, I have no reason to doubt that it's, you know, not going to work perfect. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I hate to sound like a Xylotex fanboy, but everything I've ever got from them works. Uh, you know, sure, there's probably some stuff that's better and more expensive, but uh, I can't complain at all. I, right now, I've got, uh, under this machine, I've got a Xylotex box. And on that machine over there, I've got a Xylotex box. The machine, my old gray Sidewinder that I took apart, has one of the really old. That box is like 12 years old, and it still runs. And then I have the one out there on my garage work. So that's that's four. So I've got five, counting that new one that doesn't have the enclosure that's just on the piece of plywood. But uh, I, even though I haven't connected that up and used it at all, I would have no problem at all sending folks over there. In fact, I have a link on my website saying, Hey, you know, you know, 350 bucks. You know, I don't think you could go wrong with it. Yep. I put a link up for George's book on the, uh, in the chat. Okay. So if anybody, cause that came up. So, uh, did you copy the link down below? Uh, no, let me go ahead and do that. Where, uh, yeah, cause that's, that's, the, that's George's link. The one that's down below. Gotcha. Let me go ahead and do that. And it's in the show notes, folks. All you got to do is hit that show. More. It's right down there below the video, right where you're looking. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the link George sent me. Ah, excellent. Any other questions? How are we doing on time here? Well, we're just about one minute till right, nine. nine okay. Well, that wraps it up, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, I'm having to, I hope I, my dogs aren't too annoying. I know y'all can't see them, but they're right here at my feet. They managed to figure out how to push that door open a little bit, but at least they're not barking and raising cane. So. I did want to. I did want to make sure that everybody understands that this giveaway is for a Gatton CNC kit. It is not a complete machine. It's not the whole shebang where you're going to get all this stuff and throw it together and have a working machine. It is the kit of the 21 plywood parts that I showed earlier and the set of plants. That's what it is. So I hope. Anybody that uh, somebody just did the super Corey chat. just sent you a super chat. Corey, thank you, Corey. Appreciate it much, brother. Uh, I hope nobody, you know, oh, 
giveaway. Run to the website and fill something out and then don't even know what the heck they're getting. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm telling you, it's a kit. There's still a lot more required to finish this up. But this should hopefully get somebody kickstarted to build a CNC. I get people all the time sending me emails and they're like, well, can you just send me the plan so I can look them over to decide if, you know, if this is something I could build. <laughs> and I just have to shake my head. I'm like, man, with all the videos and, you know, all the information, the stuff on the Facebook groups, the forum, if you can't decide whether or not you can build one of these, you probably ought not try to build one of these. Uh, you know, it's simple. The instructions, the, the prints are highly detailed. That's why I won't send them to anybody for you to look at them ahead of time. This is where the money is right here. This is what, what you're paying for. The other stuff is plywood parts that are cut, you know. It's, but right there is what, that right there is what the money is because my time that I've spent designing these things, making sure everything works, all of, you know, all of the stuff that you need is all called out here when you open this up. And like I said, I don't usually send hard copy. I send, send this through an email. So when you pull it up on your computer as, you know, with your Adobe reader or whatever to look at the PDF file, every time I call out, for example, the lead screws, that little McMaster card number, that's a live link. You can click on it, take you right there. I mean, I, I cannot make it any easier short of coming to your house and building it for you. I really can't. Uh, and, you know, there are a few hundred of these things in the U.S. and Canada. And I don't think, it, well, we, how many folks we got? We got 150, 154, five, whatever, watching. Has anybody had any trouble building this, this built one? Uh, nope, not, you know, not, not a lick. really straightforward. Uh, yep, that it is. Nicholas Farrell, you don't need the CAD files. You're buying the parts. The only parts you have to make are the rectangle pieces. I guess that asked that all the time too. People wanting the CAD files. No, that the you don't need the CAD files. I've already cut the parts for you. That's what the kit is. So all right. Any other questions? No, don't see any here. What are you supposed to enter in the Gatton CNC giveaway field? Nothing. That's the, that's already filled in there. So it comes up and when I get the email, that's in the subject line. And I know that that's what it's for. So I can sort it from the other emails. Carl Whitaker says, if I can do it, anybody can. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, and I've always said that too. If I can do this, anybody can do it. It's, it's not that hard. If you got a little bit of common sense and know which end of a Phillips screwdriver to hold, you can put one of these things together. Okay. Anything else on that? You don't need to make more new parts, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> no cat files. Okay. Let's uh let's do this. Bobby, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you keep an eye on the chat in case any got it come up. What I've got here is I've got uh, over here on this laptop, I've got the uh the uh spreadsheet where I where I just when I opened up the emails I would just yep. copy the stuff off the entry put it in a spreadsheet and we have one through 150 so I'm going to use this laptop here and we're going to go to intellectual property thank you Todd some folks just don't understand that this is not a you get the plans and then go make one for your neighbor and you know, your cousin Bob and all that stuff. This yeah, there's, is, there's uh, a lot more involved. property. 
Yeah, and it not only yeah, there's a there's and there's a lot more involved. It's an entire community of support uh, that 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 you that you get along with it, which which you're looking at right here. Most of, yeah. I mean, I I had I actually had a set of other plans for a CNC uh, build, and uh, and it was very close to Dave's plans uh, because, well, he was the one that made them years ago. I'll share that. Uh, yet I went ahead and, and I told Dave straight to his face, listen, I'm, I'm going to pay you full for the plans because I know you used to give them away years ago, a different set and they're close, but uh, you recognize when a person puts the effort and the time into, into something like this, and it's a small price to pay for, for a very very well designed uh, machine, uh, there's my plug. Yeah, yeah, and, and I can tell you right now, I probably shouldn't say this. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep my cool here. But if you want to get on the wrong side of me, that's sure a way to do it is start talking about sharing my plans and stuff because they're not supposed to be shared. It says that right on the front of them. It yep. says. Thank you for purchasing your Gatton CNC kit. These plans are not to be edited, resold, displayed, or shared online or offline. And that means don't have them laying on your table when you're shooting your video. These are my intellectual property. And I'm very protective of them. Because I did the work, you didn't. So, <laughs> all right. Rant over. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's get started with this hobby. If you'll just kind of keep your eye on the chat, cause I'm, gonna I'm looking here and we're going to do, uh, let's see here. I remember how I did this. I'm going to go to uh, random.org. I don't have my little basket, and I didn't really feel like uh, didn't really feel like folding up 150 pieces of paper and, and all that like before. Yeah. So I'm just going to use the random.org thing. And there's 163 watching, uh, yet only 88 thumbs up. Oddly enough, go ahead and get down there and stick a thumbs up. Uh, put a uh, click on that uh, well for all that it's worth anyway okay I'm sure most of y'all have been you know been involved in some kind of giveaway before and I go to random.org it's a random number generator and you just simply put you know like, like in my case it'll be between 1 and 150 and you hit calculate and it spits out a random number and then I'll go down through my spreadsheet and see whose name is beside that number. And that'll be the name I call out. Now, Javi, if, uh, if you could do me one other favor, too. Sure. When I call out the name, I know there's, you know, a little bit of a delay between when I say something and when they actually hear it. Usually there's like a 15 or 20 second delay. Make sure they're out there. So if... Well, what I'd like for you to do is when I call out the name, if you could type that name into the chat. All right. And I'm going to set a timer on my phone for. I got it. I'll, I'll cover the delay. I think, I think probably 90 seconds. That's a minute and a half, because since you're going to type it and put it in the chat, there's really in the delay for. OK. For that, I think. So we're going to go 90 seconds. That whatever name I call out, they have 90 seconds to respond in the chat to say I'm here or whatever. And if you're one of those folks who use the funky usernames like cool guy 86 or something, you're going to have to prove that you're who you, you say you are. Because <laughs> so, cool guy 86 isn't what I have in here. I have your name. So anyway, we'll we'll figure out how to get them to confirm that. All right. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set this from one to 150. And then we'll hit generate. And the first number generated is 32. 
So now let me go down here to my spreadsheet and we'll see who is at 32. Well, come on. I don't know why I'm using that thing. I bought it some new a, a mouse. What do you what do you call it when you buy two two of them? M mices? Mouses? They've been They've calling been them mouses. mouses. Okay, mouses. I bought two mouses. It should be mice, but not when it's computer mice. Okay, you ready to type, Bobby? Ready. The name beside number 32 is Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson, are you out there in the chat? There you go. Jim Johnson searching for Jim Johnson. <laughs> Everybody's saying uh right. <laughs> and I've got the uh I've got my phone going here with the timer. So I I know this particular individual and normally he's in the chat. So well, let's see. Uh, looking at the participants, I don't see them in the chat at the moment. Winner need. I, I, have, not, I have not seen his name all night, so. Ah, uh, well. He may not be in there. Oh, there he, he is, is here. <laughs> there, he is. there he is. There he is. He is okay. there. I guess I can turn off the. Uh, yeah, he made it with forty-five seconds to spare. All right. Well, congratulations, Jim Johnson. You are now the uh, proud owner of a <laughs> Gatton CNC kit. I hope you'll. Uh, I hope you'll build it and shoot some uh, video or take pictures at least and post on Facebook for all to see. And I pray that you'll take a lot less time to get all your parts together than I did. I think I went on, uh, what, a year, year and a half? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I built it in a week or four hours. <laughs> okay. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to go through this again. Uh, just try to avoid the confusion. I mentioned last week when I we talk, first started talking about this giveaway, because you entered this week, and we had this drawing all those names will be wiped out so you're not automatically entered in the next drawing so you have to go back to the web page fill out the entry form and do this again you got to do it for every single drawing every time i have a drawing and i will always announce uh when we're going to do one uh I don't even know if I'm going to have a show next week. Uh, if we do, I'll have the drawing. If uh, if we don't, then it will roll over. Uh, By the way, earlier uh, you received a, a, a five dollar super check from from uh, Grant Clark. We'd like to thank you, and uh, just now one from Eric E. Thank you. That's awesome, guys. You know, I, I don't I don't usually mention the the super chat much uh well look at that hold the phone folks look at mr jim johnson he just says since i have a garage works let's give the give it someone else a chance that is very go. generous of you jim i so, feel sorry I for the 10 people i feel sorry for yeah, the Fifteen the, people that those, just dropped out. <laughs> I hope those. But well, see, that's what happens when you know the the people that that show up and once you call out a name, you get a winner and they're gone. Snooze, you lose. You know, you yeah. got to hang around. See, it's still dropping. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do uh, we'll do another number, Jim. If that's uh, if that's if that's cool with you, that's that's awesome. I, I was really not that I didn't, you know, that I minded you winning it, Jim, but I was really hoping that somebody wins it that doesn't already have a CNC machine. That's kind of the whole purpose of me wanting to do these giveaways. Uh, I know when I did the last Garage Work CNC giveaway, it was kind of a letdown because the person that won it 
had just two weeks earlier bought a four before garage works and then they won the 36 by 24 so that was kind of a, you know yeah and i don't i don't try you know i try not to exclude okay jim says cool with him so we're folks we're going to do another we're going to draw another number and go again so if you stuck around good for you <laughs> so let me get it all ready again Okay, here we go. Is everybody ready? Yep. The next number is going to be 15. Now let me go see who is beside number 15. Okay, now are you ready to type, Javi? Ready. Number 15 is Jim Ridgeway. R-I-D-G-W-A-Y. Congratulations, so Jim Ridgeway. Camp, and you have uh, 90 seconds to uh, post in the chat that you're here. And Jim Ridgway. Jim is Ridgway here. is here. Congratulations, Jim Ridgway. You win an all expense Gatton kit. <laughs> okay. Now, now, Jim, do you have already have a CNC? <laughs> uh, Jim is from Morgantown, West Virginia. So, congratulations, Jim. And, uh, and the, the viewer count goes tumbling down again. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, wait, there's everybody's a surprise. Going to, to wait now until the guy says, yeah, I'm going to keep it. You know, <laughs> that's, that was funny. But thanks. Thanks again to Jim Johnson. That, that was pretty noble of him to, to give somebody who doesn't have one a chance to, to win. Uh, yeah, I, Jim. You know, I thought about saying, you know, cause I have records of everybody, uh, Sold Gatton CNC kits too, and and Garage Works. And I thought about excluding those folks, and then I thought, well, we're you know, it could be somebody who has a uh, you know that has an X carb or well, what here, have you. You know, well, here's here's yeah, and and here's what you can do: you can include the people, and that way, see, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to win it next month because that way I could give it away. And then somebody will be grateful to me for giving it away and maybe send me a, like, you know, like a, a bottle of Diet Coke or a Starbucks card or something. Speaking of oh, which, God, Jim God. Johnson, remember to send a Starbucks card to, or, <laughs> or Jim Ridgeway rather, to Jim Johnson. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should uh, send him something. Just having fun. That was, uh, okay, well, that was, that was fun. I hope it was fun for everybody watching. Uh, yeah, the drama <laughs> had a little bit of drama anyway. Yep. Uh, okay, Jim says he has a carve right now, so he needs a Gatton CNC. Oh yeah, 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 yeah buddy. I had a I had a carve right. I had a bad experience with. Well, it was one of the original ones before they tweaked them, and uh, it was when I had my sign shop. And uh, some of you know the story. It was just I had it for two days. And I said, this is a CNC machine. This is when they first came out. I, I took it back to Sears, got my two or three thousand dollars back, however much it cost. And and uh, well, I'm glad I moved up in the in the CNC world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm so happy for you, Jim. Uh, I'm glad that <laughs> Nicholas is asking if he can win Jim's carve right. <laughs> yeah, that's between you and Jim. <laughs> uh like i said we're, we're going to be doing more of these giveaways um like i said you can like when i get up tomorrow morning i'll go on the website 
I'll you know go to my email and I'll wipe out all the entries that we had for this one and I'll start a new spreadsheet. Uh, so you know, you know, you could go ahead and and really enter now if you wanted, and it'll just go on the the newer spreadsheet. But like I said, I just want to make sure everybody understands. Once you enter for this one, you're not you're not in all these drawings. It's it's not like you know lottery tickets and stuff. <laughs> it's a, a one shot deal. You you enter for that drawing and then it starts over. So, uh, but we had a good crowd here tonight. Uh, hundred and what was hundred and sixty some people uh, yep. at hundred fifty entries. So I want to thank uh, all the folks that took the time to to enter and. Uh, Yep. Uh, Sean Sean Draper had a, a bit of a question there. A Wizard Woodworks still looking for a well, not a question, but looking for a good link to a drawing up a uh, to wire a, up a control box. I'll be doing a, a series of articles um, either later this month or early May on uh, on the electronics uh, for a do-it-yourself CNC. So uh, you might want to look at those. Uh, I might even. Uh, I might even do a one of my C, learn CNC with hobby shows on 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 the wirings uh, and thereabouts differences between stepper motors, et cetera, et cetera. So keep yeah. tuned. Somebody tuned. had a question there. I think it's it's yeah, it just flipped off the screen. But all right, was, which one is it? They wanted to know about the shipping charge, how much it's, it's going to be ah. when I start, and that's that's something mess I want to talk about. You know. I guess when I do one, when I say I'm going to do one of these giveaways, everybody stops buying them because they think they're going to win one. Well, if you want, if you're going to plan on buying one of these or getting one of these, you need to do it before May 1st because I'm going to quit offering the free shipping. I've been doing the free shipping thing since the get go, since I started doing the Gatton CNC kits back in June of 2016. So, now the shipping, all I'm going to charge is is twenty five bucks, just a flat fee. Uh, and and like I mentioned before, if you live out west somewhere like California or you know Nevada or somewhere like that, it still costs way more than twenty five bucks. But that's all I'm going to charge. I'll I'll eat the other part of it. Uh, I don't mind losing a little on shipping. I just I just not going to not going to lose it all you know and like i've mentioned last week a lot of things have gone up the plywood's gone up five bucks a sheet ups i think has had three uh price increases <laughs> since i started doing and i've just absorbed all of them you know and it's, and it's like okay i need to charge a little something for that so you got all all the whole month of april uh to get one and you still get it with me footing the bill for the shipping Starting May first, they'll be twenty five dollars to um, to ship them. So, which, I mean, you can ask the people that have bought one and built it; they'll probably tell you it's still a good deal uh, at that cost. Because, like I said, folks, you really what you're paying for is all the work that went into these. Uh, so. All right. Any other questions or anything? We were asking about how to get to uh, my channel. Uh, uh, just uh, for anybody here uh, that wants to get to somebody else's channel here, uh, for those that have channels, just uh, click on the on the right of any of the comments. There's three dots. Click on it, and then you'll see go to channel, and you can subscribe there. Yeah, just Steve Mischer says, raise your price 25 bucks and just say it includes free shipping. It sounds better to most people. Don't ask why I know this. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I did, uh, you know, when I started out doing this, it was 250 bucks. Uh, and, and I've gone up 10 bucks in two years. And like I said, the, the cost increases that I've incurred has been more than 10, 10 bucks in, uh, in the last two years, but, um, yeah, it, you know, you know how it is. Everything goes up, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, 25 bucks shouldn't make or break 
your decision to buy one of these things because you know if you're gonna if you're gonna let twenty five dollars stop you from building one of these then you really didn't want to build one to start with the way I look at it. So all right. I don't see any other questions. Once again, uh George, if, if you're still out there, he he may not be out there now. I don't know. I haven't seen him lately. But you guys get a chance. Go to that link down below. It's right here and down in the uh show notes. Go, go check out this book. Yep. Less, like I said, less than 25 bucks. I want to say 22 something on Amazon Prime. You can get it and have it in a couple of days. And you will just, your jaw will drop when you see the stuff that's in this book. It is just, I just can't imagine anybody doing a book better than this. Because this is just, I mean, this is right up our alley. Uh, I mean, I know there's probably other CNC books out there. But a lot of them probably cover the, or at least the ones I've looked at before, or more geared towards the big, you know, commercial grade machines and stuff like this. This is for us right here. This is it. So excellent book. Uh, thank you so much, George. Uh, I wish you great success with this. And I, I, I have no doubt you're going to sell a ton of these. Mm -hmm. so. Anything else? Becca Miller in the house. Good to see you, Becca. I wish I could. Well, I don't know. Are you going to Houston? I, I was going to say, I wish I could come to Houston and see you, but I don't even know if you're going. Uh, I'm going to read these. That's where I'm getting. Where I can't even read it. Uh, it's, uh, well, they're, uh, they're all saying good night. Uh, let's see. I, I put in the uh, links to the uh, Useless Challenge and the Router Essentials book. And uh, Jim Sinicola is saying you can build a GAT and CNC any size you want or need, smaller, bigger, any size. Uh, yeah. Is the book available on Canadian Amazon? Trevor is asking. Trevor Carter. I don't know. I would assume so. You know, George says you bet, so I'm guess he's guessing he's answering that question. There you go, excellent. So, uh, Raymond says, "What's in Houston? They're they're having some kind of a meetup, mm -hmm. or well, no, I think it's some kind of a woodworking show. It's not the the same one that you and I went to, hobby the the woodworking show, but uh, I think it's one of the IWS ones, or um... uh, I I." I don't know really who it is, but I think I think it's a woodworking show. Yeah, Becca says wood show. Um, <laughs> Larry Park says shit before the Gatton tariffs. <laughs> That's great. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm just following Trump's lead here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's the woodworking show, Mark. That that's in Houston. It might be. I don't know. Maybe it is. But anyway, there's some kind of wood, some kind of here. I'm full of information on it. Some kind of woodworking show in Houston somewhere, and I know a bunch of folks out there uh, are going to go to it. Now, Chantilly, Virginia, was the last one uh, of of the woodworking shows uh yeah I, I was thinking that that one was kind of wound up their circuit but uh, uh let's see what do we got rockler no what is it woodworking show woodworking show of texas.com apparently okay yeah yeah i would yeah i was thinking it was uh yeah there it is see texas is so daggum big they gotta have their own they gotta have their own <laughs> and I got to tell you, folks, if if anybody out there in Texas and you would like to see one of these things, you know, in person, you could probably find somebody somewhere near you, even as big as Texas is, because I swear hardly a week goes by that I don't ship one of these to Texas. Yeah. There's got to be more of these things in Texas than any other state. Period. Yeah. I mean. So, yeah, Jerry Brown, Michael Chipser, just to name a couple. Uh, of course, they're both right there in Temple. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay. not allowed in Texas. I'm too short. Yeah. 
Yeah. I tell you, I, I don't know if I really should go back because the last time I went, they had a tornado that took out dumpster C and C. About got me. It was right down the road from the hotel I stayed at. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to get out of here. As folks dropping off, we still got over 100 folks watching. Thank you all for hanging around to the end. And congratulations again to Jim Ridgeway from, uh, what was it, Morgantown, West Virginia. Uh, get your kit uh, in, the, in the mail uh, or at UPS Monday morning. And also, if you would, send me an email or whatever. Let me know how you would like your plans, whether you want a metric, decimal, or uh, fractions, because I, I can send them either way, whatever you're used to working with. So, all right, Javi, thanks again for popping in and helping me out tonight. I appreciate you. Anytime, anytime. And I guess we're going to get out of here. So everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you all again soon. Take care. That all.